Last year, I made this video, which is about the top five revision techniques. Three of them are really easy to do. Spaced interleave retrieval practice should just become a habit because that's the best way to memorize all the content for the exam. And luckily, it's pretty easy to do that because you can just get an app like Tassamai and that will actually run that for you. But the other two, and these are the two that are the most important for getting the highest grades, elaborative interrogation and self-explanation are a little bit harder to do. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through how to elaborative interrogation because it might not be immediately obvious. <laughs> and in the previous video, I've just gone through how to do self-explanation. And so check that out as well. Elaborative interrogation is a really appealing idea for me because essentially all of these revision techniques are backed up with evidence. And so to get a really good understanding of revision, it's good, useful to know what that evidence is. And that's what elaborative interrogation actually is. It's knowing what evidence is for the content that you're learning, understanding why we know something is the case. And actually repeatedly and making a habit of doing that, not just memorizing the content, but asking yourself, okay, great, I understand that, but why do we know that's the case? Or why is that the case? And actually it's a way to target your misconceptions. And more and more, especially in science education, we appreciate that misconceptions become really large barriers to students understanding content. And so spotting your own misconceptions and then taking action to deal with them is a really powerful way to prepare yourself for the exams. Thanks so much to Tassamai for sponsoring this video. Tassamai is a self-quizzing app which is based on evidence and as a head of science, that really appeals to me. It helps students get the top grades, which is what we're all about here at Gorilla Physics. And check out the links in the description or the pinned comment or go to tassamai.com to find out more. Tassamai also has a seven day free trial, so why not check that out? Give it a go. If you like it, you can subscribe. Simply put, elaborative interrogation means to say why something is the case or why it isn't the case. And a good place to start on this would be to start with key theories or principles in science, for example, Newton's laws. So take, for example, Newton's second law, which is that force is proportional to acceleration. How do we really know that? Well, if we take away friction and we increase the force on an object by using like a linear air track, which is a key experiment in GCSE science, then you can actually show that if you double the force, you double the acceleration on a trolley or an air track slider. Now you've not just gone through memorizing F equals MA or force is proportional to acceleration, but actually that in your mind is backed up by evidence. It makes it a stronger concept and it makes it easier for you to apply that concept later in exam questions. So that would be a good place to start, to look through those kind of key theories, what you need to memorize, what you need to understand, but not just to memorize it, but to try and explain why we know it's the case. Challenging misconceptions is really important and we've done a lot of evidence on that in science education. A misconception could be as something as simple as a word that we use in everyday life, but means something really specific in science. Or it actually might have been caused by something being explained to you in far too simple terms. So maybe something that was explained in a way in a kid's TV program, but actually is a bit more complex than that. And you need to memorize that at a higher detail for GCSE sciences. But it might be a deeper misunderstanding which comes from personal experience. But in fact, the real situation is kind of counterintuitive. For instance, the whole hammer and feather idea. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. Of a gentleman named Galileo they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? They should really accelerate at the same rate, but because of the different surface area, it appears like the lighter thing doesn't accelerate as fast when we know that gravitational acceleration is independent of mass. But crucially, you need to challenge these misconceptions because they might stop you understanding something properly later on, especially in content areas that build on prior knowledge. But how do you know you have misconceptions? Well, there's several places you can find out. The first and most normal one would be feedback from your teacher. So after you've taken an exam or a test, that feedback you get is really crucial. But of course your teacher will probably feedback straight after the test. But if you go back and review all your old tests, you can actually look out for things you got wrong and that can be really purposeful revision when you actually look at, oh, I made that mistake, I had that misconception, and then I can deal with it. Sometimes just talking to your teachers or your peers can be really illuminating for things that you didn't quite grasp as well as you thought you did, or you grasped it really well, but you got it wrong. Or you could review a list of common misconceptions, and that would be really useful. If you Google 
common misconceptions in science, for instance, you'll find loads. Or of course, you could use an app or an online platform which tracks your progress and actually can show you where your misconceptions are. Anything you keep getting wrong is probably a misconception. So to get elaborative interrogation right, what you need to look out for is the evidence of why something is or isn't the case. When you next get out your textbooks, look for those terms in bold, but don't just memorize the key terms in bold. Sure, write it down. Sure, memorize it with spaced repetition but most importantly, look out on that page for the evidence of why we know that is the case. And of course, as I always say, your teachers are your most valuable resource. So do go ahead and ask them. Don't be satisfied with them just telling you what you need to know, but really drill down as to how we know that is the case. And of course, use one of my videos where I'll always try my best to show you the experiments or demonstrations or give you the evidence of why something is the case, not just tell you the stuff you need to know. It's one of Tassamai's mantras that uh, practice makes permanent. But what is more, Tassamai gets to know what you do and don't know. So it will spot those misconceptions for you. I use Tassamai in my school to make sure that students are focused on the key content areas for their exam. And we trust it because it's backed up by evidence. By doing just 10 minutes of Tassamai, four days a week, you'll ensure that you're learning the content in the fastest, most effective way possible. And what's more, there's a free trial. And although the most cost-effective way to get Tassamai is through your school, there are private subscriptions as well. And you can actually start a seven day free trial. So one suggestion I might have is start the seven day food free trial. If you like it, then take it in and show it to your teachers and say, could we get this for the school? And the more Tassamai you do, the better your memory is gonna get. And you can trust Tassamai to identify your key priority areas that you can really target with these two focused revision techniques, self-explanation and elaborative interrogation. So as you revise, make sure you're constantly reviewing what type of revision you're doing and the impact that it's having, because not all revision is created equal. So if it's not working, then stop and try something different. For example, spaced interleave retrieval practice builds memory, but elaborative interrogation and self-explanation, they really build your higher order exam technique skills. To be the strongest student that you can be, it's really important to know how you personally learn best. And that's really useful for knowing how all these five top revision techniques work together to make you the strongest student possible. And if you want a quick run through of those top five techniques, then I strongly suggest you don't ignore this video, which is on screen now.